for the win. Uh, it, it could be a pretty good afternoon, but the Hornets are going to get a test here today from the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. They're sitting in the number two spot in the MEAC with a 2-0 and o conference record, 6-11 and 11 overall. Norfolk State sitting on top, and, and they're the team that won the tournament last year, so they're going to be right at the top right now. They're 3-0 and o overall, 7-11 and 11 on the season. So they played one more game than the Aggies, and it shows. Delaware State in a tie for fifth right now, 1-1 one and one in conference play with South Carolina State, North Carolina Central. Uh, the Hornets 2-14 and 14 on the season. So they're looking for their third win of the season, second conference win of the season uh, against the Aggies here, who are 6-11 and 11 on the season, 2-0 and 0 in conference. Yeah, the Hornets are looking to carry on from that wave from Saturday. That was a tremendous effort. I tell you, they had to overcome some adversity to, to, to get that win, though, having been down 15 points and to come back and win that game on a, on a buzzer beater. Hey, man, it lifts the spirits of a lot of these young people because it's been a real trying, trying year for them. But uh, I think right now they got to be feeling good about themselves, and I'm looking forward to just seeing how they're going to step up tonight. Um, they have a very reputable opponent. You know, North Carolina a is coming into this game after having played Maryland Eastern Shore this past weekend. And, um, and I think they beat Maryland Eastern Shore right at about 20, uh, right at about 30, close to 30. So they played extremely well. Close to 40. Close to 40. 91-53, yeah. They're, they're going to face a good team tonight, a very good shooting team as well. So it's a good test, but high. right now you kind of get an opportunity to see what you're made of. Particularly, the timing is great. You're feeling good. You got a good win. So let's just see if they can put together two games in a row. Aggies trying to come up with 3-0 and for the third season in a row, the way they'd start their season. Delaware State, the last time they beat the Aggies was almost three years ago. It was February 1st, 2017. There have been a few games in the interim. So can they go to 2-1 and today and uh, uh, try to grab a piece of that second place spot in the and MEAC. Another quick note um, for our listeners is that um, coach Will Jones is actually um, serving as interim head coach for the North Carolina Aggies tonight and um, I think he's actually, this is his fourth game and through fourth game, through the uh, first four games um, he's be interesting to see how, to, you know, how things pan out tonight but um, I feel good about the, the Hornets um, chances and let's see. Let's see what we get. I think we got an exciting, could have some really exciting basketball on our hands tonight. Aggies were riding a three-game winning streak. They started the month of January against Mid-Atlantic Christian with one of those lopsided wins, 123-61. to Beat Florida A&M in their first conference game of the year in overtime, 93-87. And then uh, on Saturday uh, at uh, UMES, won that one 91 to 53 almost a 40 point difference so they've had some lopsided scores the official sponsors of HSRN are things that kind of concern me a little bit coming into this contest North Carolina a &T. They really play with a great deal of pace. They're looking to push the ball in transition. And more importantly, they do a great job of getting people into the corners. And, and they, they shoot the ball extremely well from the outside. But more, but, but more so than that, they have a great deal of athleticism and size. So we're going to get a chance to take a look at a team that really presents a lot of, a lot of issues and, and a lot of issues on, on, on various fronts. Uh, be interested to see how the Hornets handle a lot of that tonight, but um, they got to really figure out who's going to be that second and third leading scorer because what we've had an issue with all year with the Hornets is figuring out where we're going to get our points from. Um, defensively, they played outstanding last game, particularly coming down the back stretch of the second half because they were able to erase a 15-point deficit and have an opportunity to win. One of the guys to watch here who will make things happen for the Aggies is Cameron Langley. He uh, leads the conference in the assist to turnover ratio, average assists per game, and the actual number of assists. He has broken the school's single season record with 288 assists. He's led the MIAC in assist to turnover ratio the two previous seasons, and as I said, leads the conference. 
uh, so far this season. Has had five or more assists 50 times in his career. Ten or more, nine times, and has led the team in assists 68 times in his career. Cameron Langley, the guy who will make things happen out there. He may not score a whole lot for you, but you're going to know he was in the game and he made other people score. Right. Well, we're looking to see who's going to step up tonight for the Hornets. You know, against uh, North Carolina Central Saturday, you had Miles Carter, who's a walk-on, who came in and knocked down. He had 10 points, but he got them 10 points at the most critical oh, juncture yeah. during the game, yeah. which was a big part of that surge in their comeback and actually made the made the running Euro step layup that put them ahead one um, down the late stages of that game. So let's see who's going to step up for him tonight. But definitely someone, again, that second and third leading scorer is going to have to really bring forth a, a, a really valid effort tonight. Crosby is going to do what he does. He's leading the lead, the Miak in scoring, and typically on most nights he's going to get his. And thank goodness for replay on Saturday as that five-second mark, they were going to hit uh, John Crosby with his fifth foul. Instead, they went to the replay and saw it was Amir Bennett. Crosby stayed in the game and hit the buzzer beater. Starters tonight, Ronald Jackson, Devin Haygood at the forwards for North Carolina A&T. Andre Jackson, Tyler May, and Cameron Langley at the guards. For the Hornets, Fahim Janetto, Amir Bennett at the forwards. Loose ball on the opening tip, grabbed by Janetto for the Hornets. Pinky Wiley, John Stansberry, John Crosby are the guards to start the action here, and it's Wiley working down the right side, giving it off to Crosby. Good spin move to work inside the, the arc. Takes it across court to Janetto. Janetto to Bennett. They go inside now. Janetto up over top and puts it in as he went over the defender. That's a nice finish there by Janetto. You don't see him play too often with his back to the basket, so that's very encouraging to see, particularly here early. Cameron Langley holds the ball for the Aggies, sends it out top of the key. Ronald Jackson drops it in for a three. It's a good shooting team. they got to be able to contest those shots. So we have our first lead change here. Uh, they're only going to give him two on that shot, by the way. He had his foot on the line, apparently, so it's a 2-2 game. No lead change there. Hornets working it around. Janetto looking for some help. Ball knocked out of his hands and taken away by Andre Jackson. He gets the easy layup to make it a 4-2 game. Yeah, they're very quick and active in the passing lanes and stuff, so defensively, this um, anti uh, Aggie team really concerns me. Very aggressive and quick. Crosby goes over to Wiley on the right side. Wiley moves up top of the key, sends it out. Janetto wants three. Oh, nothing but net. I'll tell you, Janetto's on fire here to start off. He has the first five points. Get them while they're hot. 5-4 game. Delaware State leads with 18-20 left in the first half. Langley brings it down, sends it across to Tyler May. May looking inside, guarded by Crosby. Works to the left side, now sends it back over on the right to Ronald Jackson. Jackson gives it off to Jackson, Andre Jackson. Andre Jackson puts up an air ball, but it's grabbed loose ball by Tyler May. Hornets should have had that loose ball, but didn't. And it's a 6-5 lead by the Aggies, but that'll change as the Hornets grab three. It's a three-pointer by Stansberry. Eight. Six lead, Delaware State, and nothing there on that possession by the Aggies. Crosby brings it down, sets the play, works around Janetto, gives it to Janetto. He's going to shoot from about the same spot that he hit the three. Missed that one off the back of the rim. Great Comes start. on out. Great start by the Hornets, though. Now they just have to make sure they do a solid job defending. It's Langley being guarded by Wiley. Top of the key, Jackson, Andre Jackson, drives left side of the lane, and we have the first foul of the game. This will be on the Hornets, and it looks like it'll be John Stansberry picking it up. Stansberry is wearing a little knee brace tonight. Makes you wonder how is his mobility going to be. He didn't have that on, on Saturday. He's going to get a chance to sit down and take a breather here as they will send in Miles Carter. And the Aggies just evened it up at eight. Aggies showing a little full-court pressure here, 2-2-1. Two, two, full-court press, dropping into a man-to-man. -man. Carter drives the length of the court over top and drops it through. 
That one hit the back of the room, went up high, and then fell down through the hoop. 10-8, Delaware State leads by two. Tried to feed it inside underneath to May. He lost the handle, but saved it before it went out of bounds. Looking for three on the shot by Andre Jackson. Missed. Hornets rebound. Crosby sidesteps a defender. Drives in. Misses the shot, but he was fouled. I'll tell you, Coach, um, Coach Skeeter is actually, from the last game, you could tell he basically gotten some trust in Miles Carter. He's injected him into the game here really early, much earlier than normal. John Crosby, what can we tell you about him? First thing, okay, leading scorer in the MIAC. And he gets his first point of the game to make it 11-8. to eight. A whole bunch of superlatives, though, about this Dayton transfer. He has really made a difference here for Delaware State this year. Yeah, he's been an impact player just from the outset of the season. I think what's more impressive is that you got Miles Carter here who's really coming into his own and getting comfortable and being able to be a contributor. Both shots made, 12-8, make it 12-10 on that shot. Yeah, this team plays with a lot of pace, man, and they shoot the ball extremely well. So the Hornets got to play defense. Andre Jackson with the shot. Down to Wiley in the left corner. Nice pass by Crosby over top. Kind of a hook pass over his own head. It's Carter with a jumper. Carter with two. 14-10, Hornet lead. And the ball out of bounds, knocked out of bounds by Delaware State. Janetto broke that one up, and it went out of bounds, and we have our timeout with 15-59 left in the first half. Hornets 14-10 over the Aggies. This is Delaware State University basketball on HSRN, the voice of HBCU sports. And go to Mount. Aggies with the ball. Shot by Tyler May. Bounces off the rim and way up high to get the rebound for Delaware State. It's Amir Bennett. They come down. Pinky Wiley, left side. Feeds inside now. Whoa. Slipping and falling and losing the ball out of bounds was Fahim Janetto. Well, I see something different tonight. They actually got Fahim Janetto in the post playing with his back to the basket. That's something very different. In all of the games he played in last year, he was always faced up. So looking pretty good here. Horn is showing a little bit of 2-3 zone. And Andre Jackson looking for three, missing the shot. Rebounded by a &T. Turnaround jumper missing inside by Ronald Jackson. And this time, Pinky Wiley grabs the loose ball, brings it down for Delaware State. On the left side, hold on, a whistle and a foul as Miles Carter had the ball. The foul away from the ball, and it looks like it's going to be on Ronald Jackson. That's the te second team foul, and the first on Jackson here. Trying to make sure that he doesn't <laughs> tire uh, Fahim Janetto out too early here. Um, quick sub with uh, Ronald Lucas. Kalan a t is making quite a few substitutions themselves. 15-17 left in the half. Hornets uh, trying to uh, inbound the ball here. 
and tell Ronald Jackson, oh, you were substituted for. You need to go to the bench here. <laughs> At six on the floor for a moment. Hornets missing the shot. Ball knocked out of bounds. Amir Bennett trying to grab the rebound, was unable to control it. Hornets showing a little full-court press here themselves. 2-2-1 two, two, full-court press. Fred Cleveland brings it down. They pass it down into the forecourt. Tyrone Lyons now back to Cleveland. Cleveland being guarded by Carter. Cleveland works left side. They go inside the foul circle, back out to Cleveland. He wants three and nothing but net. Well, he just comes right in the game and knocks down a three. Can you break a sweat, young fella? 14-13 game now. Hornets up by one. Wiley looked like he wanted to shoot for three. Pulled it back down. Sent it over to Crosby. He'll go for three. Just a little bit too much. Now a loose ball. Scramble for it on the floor. And it's going to be North Carolina A&T that comes away with it. Cleveland now in front of the Hornets bench. Now comes back out toward the middle. North Carolina A&T. Black uniforms. Gold trim. Gold numerals. Or trim around the numerals that are black. Hornets in the powder blue with the Royal, the Columbia Blue, I think they call it, with red numerals. Shot missed by North Carolina A&T. Loose ball finally gathered in by the Aggies, and there's Cleveland with another three. Put the Aggies in front 16-14. Yeah, they create a lot of pace for you here. Miles Carter in front of the North Carolina A&T bench. They pressured him, and he finally put his foot on the line, out of bounds. Turnover to North Carolina A&T. Now, I hear what, what Coach Eric Skeeters was asking the officials about. There's not a lot of room between the seats and the boundary line, and Skeeters was questioning the number of players on North Carolina A&T who stood up along there and kind of cleared out that, that open space and uh, how much that might have been interference. Hornets well, are back playing 2-3 um, zone. Tyler May for three on the alley-oop, and it missed. Yeah, you always Wade Parker put it over top on the alley-oop. Yeah, you always have to be careful when you're playing a 2-3. A lot of teams will try to throw over the top of the 2-3 zone, particularly when you have a team with tremendous athleticism, as I spoke to earlier in the contest. I'm proud of getting started. This team is very athletic. They play with a great deal of pace, pushing the pace, and they try to force action with their defense. Trey Gross committed the foul, though, on the play to send Quay Parker to the line. You don't mind sending him there as long as he doesn't hit, but on the season, coming in here, 5 of 11, now he's 6 of 12 after that shot. That's a 50% foul shooter right now. See what he does here on this second shot. Well, he's better than 50% now as he goes to 7 of 13 on the year. And increases... Showing a little bit of, and, and showing a little bit of 1 3 1 here, half court. Changing the defenses up, giving the Hornets something different to look at. And now the Aggies with a four-point lead. 18-14, 13-20 left in the first half. Good move inside. Count that basket for John Crosby as he went in with a jumper, got fouled in the act of shooting, and still made the bucket. That was quite an acrobatic play there by John Crosby. You know, coming to a, a, a complete stop, jump fade towards the left to finish that and getting fouled in the eye. Crosby goes to the line. Hits that shot and pulls the team within a point. Five points here in the game for Crosby. 18-17, Aggies lead. Three-point shot missing. Wiley scrambles to get the fast, the, the loose ball. Sends it down. Crosby goes baseline, tries to pass it, and uh, just a miscue there. Hornets pushing the ball themselves, trying to play with a little more pace as well, trying to see if you can pick up some easy baskets here in transition. Amir Bennett steps out now as Fahim Janetto comes back in. We have Amari Pete Green on the floor for Delaware State. He missed a couple of games. They'll send it out to Crosby. Looks for three, and John Crosby just put the Hornets in the lead. 20 to 18 as he nailed the three from in front of the Aggies bench. Cameron Langley works inside, passes it back out. Top of the key, Tyrone Lyons off the rim, won't go. They'll get a second try here on the rebound. Langley goes in, 
His shot won't go. Underneath, shot blocked. Taken away by Omari Pete Green. Feed out, two on one. Fast break, three on one. And the shot blocked from behind on John Crosby. And are they, they're going to call goaltending on that? Yeah, I think they got away with one there, but we'll take it. We'll take it. I don't think the ball had hit the backboard. Right. It was still on its way up, yeah, but I they're believe, gonna call it. I believe they missed that one, but we'll take it. Is that reviewable? No. Okay. Uh, that's not a reviewable call. That's good. Because <laughs> I think they'd overturn the call if they could review it. 22, 18 now. Hornets up by four. Hornets selling them to their two three. Cleveland. They go inside. Tried to get it to Harry Maurice. It's a foul on Janetto. Yep. His first. That's just the third team foul now here in this first half. 12-22 left in the first half. Miles Carter getting some more minutes as he will spell Pinky Wiley. Shot. Missed. Hornets. Loose ball. Carter's good hustle by Carter. He's, he's deserving his minutes because he hustles. Hornets lose on a pass down inside. Cleveland with a layup. Missed the tip in by Quay Parker. To make yeah, it easy layup there off a loose ball situation. Maggers are back to that 1 3 1 half court zone here. Crosby goes through traffic and will have a blocking foul. Called on Harry Maurice. And a timeout with 11.52 left in the first half. Hornets lead by two, 22 to 20 over North Carolina A&T. This is Delaware State University basketball. We're HSRN, and we're the voice of HBCU Sports. John Crosby goes cross court to Carter back to Crosby now down in the corner Pete Green looking for three just a little bit too strong but right into the hands of Fahim Janetto. he's underneath he can't get it to go and the Aggies grab the loose ball Cleveland brings it down quickly sends it on outside to the Langley Langley drives in back out Cleveland wants three already has two three pointers in the game it missed but it was rebounded by Ronald Jackson. He drive passes off, and the drive in by Quay Parker. He gets two and gets to go to the line. That's another foul there on um, Janetto. No, that was Miles Carter got what? that one. Miles Carter? Okay. Yeah. Going to send Quay Parker to the line, though. Parker went to the line earlier. And hit both shots. And he gets that one too. So Aggies back into the lead. 23-22. Clay Parker from the line helping his team out. Three for three. Delaware State down in the front court. Right side. 
Carter. Janetto from the corner. Too strong. Missed everything. Right to North Carolina A&T. Lead pass down to Langley. Langley feeds inside. And a good drive to the basket by Ronald Jackson. He got fouled on the way in. Yeah, A&T plays with pace. Every miss, they're looking to get in transition. And um, a lot of times got people running to the corner, so they're looking to score. They're not looking just to walk the ball across. So you, Hornets got to do a better job of getting back in transition defense. That was Amir Bennett that got called for that foul to send Ronald Jackson to the line. 76% shooter on the way into the game here, and he didn't hurt his average with that one as he makes that one go. Now a two-point lead for North Carolina A&T. Wants to make it a three-point lead with 10.55 left in the half. Jackson, a 6'8", 205-pounder, played his high school ball, Fleming Island High School. They were the Golden Eagles. And he makes the shot, 25-22, back to a three-point lead for the Aggies. Omari Pete Green working with Crosby on the left side. Green, once three, just off the mark, hit the rim. Loose ball, comes out to Crosby. Spin move into the lane, but he left the ball behind. Yeah, it's Langley on the fast break, two on one. Yep, Andre Jackson with the layup. One of the few times I've seen Crosby get stripped on that, on that reverse there. 27-22. Carter drives the baseline, works his way in. They're going to call him for traveling. He had to shift and, and uh, cut to the outside, and when he did, Got the extra step in. Yeah, that one three one is now beginning to give the Hornets a little trouble here. It's making them subtle for, for you know, three-point attempts, outside shots, and they haven't been able to connect, so got to figure out how to get down inside of it. Carter goes out. Pinky Wiley back into the game here. And there's a jumper from just inside the foul circle by Tyrone Lyons, and that is... We'll have the Hornets calling a timeout with 10-11 left. This is not a media timeout. It's a short one, so we'll keep it right here. Thrive Physical Therapy. In this first 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, the Hornets kind of got off to a blazing start, and um, they've kind of really settled down here a bit. Um, you know, um, a t changed defenses, and they've been running the 1-3-1 half-court zone here in the last several, probably the last two, three minutes. So um, the Hornets got to figure out how to get something other than a three-point attempt because we haven't been able to convert. Um, Hornets, um, Agus showing a 2-2-1 full-court press here. And the Hornets with the ball. It's Pete Green. Giving off to Crosby. Crosby sends it down in the right-hand corner to Fahim Gennetto. His shot misses. Rebounded by North Carolina A&T. Here's Langley brings it down. Works, tries to go around Crosby. Can't do that. Now a lob pass back over the head. A blind pass back to Tyrone Lyons. And it was good. Good pass by Ronald Jackson. Now they send it cross-court to Andre Jackson. Jackson drives into the lane. Shh, misses. Follow-up. Trying for the dunk was Ronald Jackson. He missed, and the Hornets got the rebound. A lot of traffic around him when he tried for that dunk. Not an easy one. Tough shot, yeah. Good for three from the top of the key, Amir Bennett. Hey, he got the roll, though. You gotta love it. Hit the front of the rim and bounced back off the glass. 9-14 left in the half. It's 29-25. You know, the Aggies don't mind taking quick threes, so the pace of this game is going to be up. Crosby looking for it. Well, they blew the whistle before the shot went off. Crosby was looking for three, but we had a foul away from the ball. And it will be on Ronald Jackson. That's his second. Clock stopped with 9.05 left in the half. That's the fifth team foul here in this first half. Both teams with five now. Hornets ball out of bounds underneath here. Hag is playing man to man, half court. Defense. Inbounded to Wiley. Pinky goes across to the right side to Crosby. 
Bennett in the foul circle. Jumper bounces around just off to the right a little bit and won't fall in. Andre Jackson sends it to the right side to his teammate, Ronald Jackson. Now inside. Oh, inside a layup, and it missed off the front of the rim for Devin Haygood. All alone down in the corner, Wiley. They came out, challenged him on the three. He just sidestepped, went inside to try to shoot the two, missed the shot. It's Andre Jackson from in front of the Hornets bench. Missed. Haygood, rebound. Hornets take it away. Wiley on the fast break. And Wiley got it. That's a good rebound there by Janetto and was able to advance the forward to Pinky Wiley. He can... He was able to convert on the layup. And you're not going to catch Pinky Wiley from behind. 8-13 left in the first half. North Carolina A&T 29, Delaware State 27. Hornets basketball back in a moment here on HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. Gary Lang along with Coach John Hill. Aggies ball, North Carolina A&T trying to go to 3-0 on the season here today. Yeah, Hornets have been playing this 2-3 zone, you know, in the full court, showing a little bit of 2-2-1 full court pressure, settling into a 2-3 zone. Andre Jackson left side, goes baseline, off the glass, good. And he'll go to the line as he gets fouled. That's a big time move there by Andre Jackson. And that's a foul on Janetto. Um, that gives Janetto his second foul of yep. the half. Yeah. You know, he's just trying to work himself back into shape here. You can tell he's kind of, you know, new getting back, probably carrying a few extra pounds that he normally wouldn't, ha wouldn't have on him. But, you know, when you're injured, sometimes your mobility is not what it should be in terms of being able to get yourself in shape. So... He's going to have to play himself in the shade. Jackson makes the free throw. Yes, he does. And, and he's really not a good free throw shooter on the season coming in 21 of 43. That makes him 22 of 45. He's a 50% shooter from the line now. Steal by North Carolina A&T as Tyler May takes it in and draws a foul. Looks like it'll be on Pinky Wiley, his yeah, first. Yeah, Pinky Wiley turned it over, just being a bit careless there with the ball. You definitely want to try to do a better job. You don't want to give too many breakaway opportunities for easy points, fast break opportunities for layups. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to convert, but um, 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 Tyler May is at the line shooting. And he's a good foul shooter, 76% as he comes into the game and makes that shot. He makes the first there. 6 point lead now make it 7 for the Aggies Tyler May with 8 points 33 27 34 27 Hornets trying to work it in pass blocked but Crosby got it back they go inside 
Craig Gross was inside, tried to get the shot. They stood up in front of him. He pulled it down and then tried again, missed it. Yeah, the Hornets have to be careful here and try not to keep up with this pace that North Carolina a t is running. Tyler pace gives teams problems. Tyler May makes two for the Aggies. They're up now by nine. 36-27. Well, Amari Pete Green just found the range. He cut that a little bit to make it 36-29. It's a good shot there. Definitely needed a bucket. Now it's Andre Jackson top of the key being guarded by Pete Green. Works inside to Lyons. Back to Andre Jackson. Lyons on the left side looking for three. Came up short. And Pinky Wiley just managed to save that. I thought his foot hit out of bounds before he threw the ball. Crosby goes through traffic. He gets fouled as he goes for the underhanded layup. Let's see who this is going to be. Devin Haygood picking up his second of the game. And that is the team's sixth foul in the act of shooting. John Crosby to the line. And if there's one Hornet you want at the foul line, if he could only choose one, he's sixth in the MEAC in free throw percentage. He got that one. Yeah, well, he, he, any opportunity he gets to score, you better know. He cashes in. He's a dynamic scorer. And, I, and, and he, dem he demonstrates that night in and night out. Draws a lot of attention from every, from every opponent knowing that he's the leading scorer in the conference as well. Coach Eric Skeeters keeps that scorer's table busy with substitutions through a game, doesn't he? Crosby second shot misses. It's a rare miss there for him. Langley grabs it for the Aggies. He's on the left side with the ball. Sends it down in the right-hand corner. They're looking for three. This one off the rim. Missed. Loose ball inside. Scramble for the ball. Aggies trying to get it in the backcourt. Hornets will have a jump ball here. Near midcourt. Good hustle on as uh, uh, Fred Cleveland was there to try to get the ball. But Ronald Lucas hustled down there, went to the floor with them. That's good hard play by both teams getting after it. Loose ball. That's what you're supposed to do. Possession. Get get possession. Yep. Possession Sorry. goes to the Aggies, though. 606 left in the half. Lay out and get it. Hornets playing 2 3 zone. They're sticking with the zone. Remind me sometime to tell you my opinion of the possession arrow. And guys hustle after the ball, and then it's given to the other team. Langley trying to go inside. Shot clock violation by North Carolina A&T. That's good defense by Delaware State. That looked pretty strange. It looked like they probably didn't reset. Well, they didn't use 30 seconds there. No, they didn't. But On a uh, new possession, there should have been a reset. The possession really didn't change, though. It was Aggie's ball before the... Uh, Jump ball. Wally working with Crosby. Crosby alone. Crosby for three. Hits off the rim. Won't go in. Now underneath for the follow-up. It's Miles Carter. And as he goes up, he gets fouled. No, I think they call a jump ball situation again. Did they? Well, it'll be Hornets ball this time. I tell you, Miles Carter's man, he plays hard. Yeah. He, he really went up to get that offensive rebound. When he brought it down, though, they were able to tie it up. And create a jump ball situation. Yeah, he wanted to go up with it, and somebody had their hand on top of it, so that's the jump ball. Hornets ball, out of bounds underneath. Hag is playing man-to-man -man half court defense here. Coach Skeeters had a question for the official. The official went over to the scorer's table. I don't know what that was about but that's what happened. And the Hornets had the possession of the ball. Crosby looking inside. Crosby goes inside. Fadeaway jumper, too strong over everything. Hornets could not control the loose ball, and the Aggies take it down. Lead pass right side. It's Cleveland driving inside, high off the glass and off the mark. Out to Delaware State. Carter grabs it, gets it to Wiley. Wiley sends it down to Crosby. Crosby loses it. Yeah, both teams kind of got a mirror of each other's philosophy here. They're really, really pushing the ball in transition, trying to get early offense in transition, shooting threes. 
attacking the basket. There was a violation there that turned the ball over to the Aggies. I didn't hear what they said it a was. Kickball. A kickball, that's what I thought maybe. Now it's Langley working to the left side, sends it out to Cleveland. Cleveland tries for the alley-oop. He misses it. Maurice underneath. He went up with it, but he got fouled. Miles Carter getting his second foul of the game. And now uh, Coach Skeeter is talking to the official and probably asking, well, how much when Miles Carter down at the other end that happened, he didn't get the foul, but their guy did. Harry Maurice at the line, 73% on the season from the charity stripe. Hits that shot, makes it 37-30. You definitely like to see them allow the, team, the, um, the players to play through such a situation. Um, but, you know, again, sometimes it's going to get called, and in many cases you love to see them just, just allow them to, you know, to play through some of that minor contact. Maurice getting both shots. He's uh, from Great Britain. Came in from the U.K., Attended Beckley Preparatory School. I was unable to look up much about them. <laughs> Here's top of the key shot for Delaware State. Crosby. John Crosby said, okay, we need a big one here. And he just dropped a three to make it 38-33. Four and a half minutes left in the first half. Shot. Foul. Tyrone Lyons gets it in. He'll go to the line. Was it a foul? Was it a charge of foul? What exactly was it? They're going to call Ron Lucas for the foul, his first. Looks you know, like he was standing pretty straight up vertical to me, up and down. Yeah. I don't know what more he could have done or should have done in that situation. Lions, no call or charge, it looks to me. Lyons a pretty good foul shooter, but missed that shot. So we'll stay at 40-33 with 4.20 left in the first half. Crosby gets the pass away between three defenders and then off the glass, Ron Lucas. With a bank shot from the foul line. Yeah, 40 to 35. We'll take any of them we can get any way we can get them, huh? Fred Cleveland over to Quay Parker. Parker his, back to Cleveland. Man-to-man -man half court here, changing the defense a little bit. Cleveland gives it off to Langley. Langley drives right side of the lane, throws it up wild, and way off the mark on the right side of the bucket. Hornets grab that loose ball off the glass, give it off to John Crosby. Crosby tried to shoot a pass inside, but it was taken away by North Carolina A&T. Then they had a bad pass down at the other end, maybe one pass too many, and almost lost the ball, but they saved it before it went out of bounds. Cleveland will bring it out and clear it from center court. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Parker over to Maurice. Maurice going to get three on that one. I tell you, last person you would think to step out and shoot a three would be Maurice. And he did it pretty fluently. Big guy, isn't he? Yeah, excellent touch. 6'1", 235. Hornets missing down at the other end. Ball last touched by the Aggies, out of bounds. And we have a timeout with 3.03 left in the first half. An eight-point lead for North Carolina A&T, 43-35. This is Delaware State University basketball. We're HSRN, the voice of HBCU sports.
Hornets down by eight. Gary Lyon, Coach John Hill at Delaware State University. Hornets looking to make it two and one on the season in the MIAC. But this is a tough opponent. Inbound to Crosby. Crosby kicks it out. Pinky Wiley wants three. Off the back of the rim. Won't fall in. Follow up. Leroy Moore too strong over top of everything. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Aggies ball. Yeah, they got a couple of really good looks there um, and couldn't connect on either one of them. Leroy Moore and um, Pinky Wiley had a rare deep three there. It's Cameron Langley who brings it past center court being guarded by Moore. Works inside, takes the shot. It's slapped out of bounds by Ron Lucas, but only after the whistle blows and there was a foul. Leroy Moore gets called for that foul. Yeah, that will Moore. be the 10th foul of the half. Yeah, Leroy Moore has to do just a bit of a better job there just trying to contain the ball handler because, um, you know, the young man just kind of bared down and drove right past him. Talked about Langley and his assists, but uh, he's a 59% foul shooter and just hit that first shot. Yeah, Langley didn't really give much. You know, just didn't give much respect to, to Moore there. Driving right by him. Langley. First, second shot hits the front of the rim and gets that backspin and goes in. 45-35, now a 10-point lead. I can stay with that 1-3-1. One, one. Oh, they Crosby just turns it over. Yeah, they just came from behind and knocked it away from Crosby on the dribble. It was taken by the Tyrone Lions, and he took it down and emphatically slammed it through. Wow, that's a finish there. That's what you call a finish. Broke it fast. It looked like it was knocked out by Quay Parker. Yeah, and highlight reel dunk and and one. Let's see if he makes the free throw. Wiley picking up his second foul. Lions hitting that shot as well. He has seven points in the game. It's 48-35. Yeah, Hornets has got to take care of the ball. Yeah, Aggies have opened up a 13-point lead here now with under two and a half minutes to go in the first half. And now we have a foul by the Aggies. That's their seventh of the half. Quay Parker has two now. Substitutions occurring. And I believe it, Amir Bennett will go to the foul line for the Hornets. Yeah, Amir Bennett has been pretty quiet tonight. You know, to this point, he only has three points. Um, he's been rather quiet, you know, because there's been so much pace in this game. Everybody, both teams running off each other's misses, so there's been a lot of transition. Got the first one to go. Hasn't been much of a half-court game. No. Bennett to shoot the second one. 6'8", 220 pounds. Right now, he's probably the, the tallest player on the floor at the moment. Those are two big free throws there. Now you cut the deficit to 11 because you definitely don't want it to balloon to, you know, any, you know, enormous uh, number at this point in time in the game. 13 was bad enough. It's Andre Jackson with the ball. He's being forced to the left side, and now there's too much contact, and it will be a foul called on Ron Lucas, his two, second. That's a two-shot foul the rest of the way. Yeah. So, you know, Hornets have to be careful here with their fouls because every every foul from here to the end will be two shots. 2-11 left in the half. Jackson at the line on the game so far is one for one. One for two. Bounce that one off the front of the rim. Full section behind us here, in case you haven't noticed. The students are back on campus. Class has started today. So the cheering section is here. We missed both. Yeah, they leaning on Andre a little bit here. A little Andre Jackson. I think you can kind of hear him in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. John Crosby got the loose ball. It's Pinky Wiley now sends it left side to Moore. Back out to Wiley. Hornets working it around quickly. Slow it down. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Under two minutes left in the half. Wiley looks inside. Passes it inside to, and they go to Ronald Lucas. He was under the, back, the backboard. The ball was knocked away from him. And out of bounds. And... 
And they came over and indicated it to this side of the court uh, who committed the foul. I think it was Tyrone Lyons. That's his first, but it's the eighth team foul, and it will send Lucas to the line. Free throws give you a chance to kind of cut into this deficit a little bit here. Got to make them. He did on that one. I tell you, Lucas gives the Hornets good minutes here. You know, it'd be good to see him kind of log a few more uh, minutes, and you know, as the season progresses. He really he, does. Yeah. He definitely gives him good minutes. Gives him some size when he goes in there too. Yeah, a little size and muscle. Yeah. At six six, 190 pounds. Just a freshman, so he'll be coming along. He missed the second shot. It's Andre Jackson with the ball. Giving it to Langley. Langley goes inside, kicks it back out now to Lyons. Wants three, won't fall. Harry Maurice underneath gets the rebound. And then we have an, That's an awesome a foul. Yes. On Tyler Mayhe. Kind of extended that arm, trying to create some separation um, before being able to put it back up. Ten-point difference here. Give the ball to Delaware State. One twenty-three left in the half. Aggies staying with their, you know, they're staying with their, um, their one-three-one half-court defense here. Very aggressive, though. Amari Pete Green. They'll double up on him. He'll get some help from John Crosby. Crosby works inside and takes the short jumper. That's a great look there. Really penetrated that one-three-one because it's extended toward half court he was able to get down inside of and get a nice little soft <coughs> soft close range shot shot I have Crosby at 16 points here in the first half they tried to pass it underneath and it didn't work it got to Maurice and he's called for traveling missed the handle on it and end up getting it for steps one too many turnover to Delaware State 52.6 seconds remaining in this first half and that's a 22.6 second difference with the shot clock. Yeah, it seems like the Hornets are beginning to get more and more comfortable with this 1-3-1. They're beginning to solve this puzzle. Crosby brings it down slowly, crosses the center court line to Amari Peak Green. They'll close on him, and when they do, the foul is committed by Cameron Langley. That's both teams are in the uh, double bonus here with the last 42 seconds remaining. Omari Pete Green already has two points in the game. He's missed a couple of games here. I don't think he played much last game. He's played in 15 games on the season. Started 14 of them. So it's 16 games played, but 14 starts. Missed that foul shot. He'll shoot a second. Yeah, when your opportunities are at a minimum, you definitely got to perform when you get the chance to touch the floor. So he has to step up and make plays. While he goes out, Leroy Moore comes in as Omari Pete Green makes the second shot to make it 48-41. About an 11-second difference between game clock and shot clock. We're down to 30 seconds left in the half. Andre Jackson pulls it back, sends it out to Tyler and Wim A. Now back to Jackson. He'll penetrate right side of the lane, puts up a short shot, and the Hornets grab that rebound. Crosby gets it, 15 seconds left in the half. Crosby around traffic, sends it out to Amari Pete Green. He'll drive right side of the lane, off the glass, it falls in. And he'll go to the line. Rolled that one around the rim before it fell in. That's a great finish by Amari Pete Green. You haven't seen a lot of that out of him this year being able to put it on the deck and get to the basket. That time he was really, really decisive about what he wanted to do, showed a shot fake, put it on the floor and went strong to the rim and was able to get fouled in the act. So now he gets a chance to complete a three-point play. I'm not sure exactly what else is going on here. Both teams have kind of went to their benches. Is there a timeout or they're going to the monitor for a review here to make sure they get the foul on the correct person? When it comes to your car or truck, trust the duck. That's for Harry Maurice, that'll be his second. And we have just 8.6 seconds left in this first half. 
Hornets will be going on the road after today. They get a little bit of time off before their next game, too. And I think that might be just to let the students adjust to the semester that started today here at Delaware State University. All-natural gourmet chips with no MSG or gluten. Symphony Potato Chips. Order yours online today at symphonychips.com. here with this final possession of the half. Uh, you just got to make sure you don't give up, you know, an uncontested layup and make it real tough if they shoot a jump shot so that you can test it and do a good job of getting the rebound. Eight seconds is more than enough time. Really, 8.6 is more than enough time to get the distance, the length of the floor, and get a, a good shot. The officials a little bit of a conference right now. Alex Langley, Billy Brooks, and Michael Terry working this game for the MEAC. Not exactly sure what's going on here because now they've. I'm not sure they are either. They bring in the shooter, which is Amari Pete Green, who drove to the basket and got fouled in the act. Uh, he didn't make the basket, so now he has an opportunity to complete the three point play with his free throw. Um, but what else is happening, I'm not exactly sure. No one else is around the lane. Everybody else is back near center court. Was there a technical that there we missed? There has to have been one because now. Um, he's shooting two shots, and he really should only have gotten one shot because he did convert the basket. Right. He makes both. So there must have been a technical foul, and, and now they're bringing the players back to the line, and he'll get to shoot the free throw that goes along with the basket that he scored. He could make this a five-point play. The two going in, the two foul shots now, and this next one, that's a five-pointer. No doubt. No doubt. I'd like to know what happened. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe somebody wasn't in the book. There wasn't a there wasn't a um, a name in the official book. Um, but it didn't seem like there was much being said. Scuffle or yeah, made the bucket. Right. So he gets one shot. Right. He gets two shots. Was there a technical? Yes, you got a flagrant. So oh, a flagrant shot. foul. Okay. All right. Okay. So we got, got the explanation. So you got a flagrant foul, and with the flagrant foul, you get the two shots, and then he gets to come back and shoot the one from the from the one and one opportunity where he converted on the layup. Good explanation from the official there. Again, to your point, though, he makes his free throws a five point. That it's is a five a, point. It's a uh, five point play. Five point play. 48-46. They get within two as we're ready to go to the end of the half. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Shot up, and it's no good. And with a tenth of a second on the clock, we have a foul. Again, like I said before, that 8.6 seconds is more than enough time to get a good shot. So, you know, I guess Coach Skeeter was, you know, at that time trying to make sure that his defense was aligned to not to give up a great shot, but that's kind of hard because it's pretty much a really solid offensive possession, plenty of time. Cleveland is at the line shooting. He makes the first. It gives Amir Bennett his second foul. So one so, thing you don't want to happen is a big to score points with no time on the clock. Tenth of a second, rolls that one around, bounces it off the backboard, and it goes in. So it's going to be a four-point lead for North Carolina A&T going into the locker room at the half, 50 to 46. Fred Cleveland hitting both shots there will finish the first half with eight. 50 to 46 game here as we go to halftime. We'll be back, don't go away. This one's gonna be a fun second half. Delaware State University basketball on HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports.
50, Hornets 46. And look, we got an exciting game on our hands. Aggies shooting 40% from the floor in the first half. Delaware State shooting 48.4% from the floor. But here's the difference. Free throws, 83% for North Carolina A&T, 79% for Delaware State, hitting 11 of 14, while the uh, A&T got 15 of 18. We have a four-point difference in the game here as we come back for the second half, 50 both, to 46. Both teams shooting extremely well from the free throw line, too, so we've got a good one on our hands. Let's second see what half, happens here. Second half underway as Ronald Jackson sends it in to Cameron Langley. Langley works to the right side. Works now toward the middle. Lays off a little bit of a pass. Gets it into Devin Haygood. Ball knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Delaware State. They couldn't control that loose ball. Aggies will keep it. As they work around to try to get somebody open to take this pass, they'll send it all the way in, almost taken away by Pinky Wiley. Open on the left side for the jumper for three. Andre Jackson missing. And then in the battle for the rebound, looked like uh, Fahim Janetto fouled Devin Haygood. Yeah, Andre Jackson um, missed on the three-point attempt. And um, Aggies were able to get an offensive rebound. They put that one on John Crosby instead, and that's his first of the game. He got in foul trouble last Saturday, and, and that uh, slowed the offense down just a little bit. Pass over to Ronald Jackson. He couldn't control it, hit off his hand, went out of bounds. Hornets ball. Aggies turn it over. Let's see what we can do here. Cut that lead a little bit here on this possession. That's what you have to do before you can get in the lead. You have to cut the other team's lead. Wiley works left side. And a rolling uh, block there by Devin Haygood giving him three. Yeah, Haygood got away with one early there uh, off a missed shot, swatting down. Hornets will inbound the ball again. Wiley being guarded by Tyler May as he throws it into John Crosby. Crosby right side looking for three off the front of the rim. Hornets hustle to the ball. Wiley gets out and gets it before it goes across the center court line. Fahim Janetto was there also. He backed off when Wiley came in. Janetto left side now with the ball as they cross around. Amari Pete Green into the lane off the back of the rim. Aggies can't control the rebound. Knock it out of bounds. Whoop, they're going to say touch last by Delaware State. Oh, look to me like look. it was the Aggies. Yeah, they got, got a good look at the basket, though. It just didn't go for them. But, you know, now they just got to begin to put together some stops defensively. One minute into the second half. No one has scored yet. We're still at 50-46. Langley gives it off to Ronald Jackson. Jackson passes it to Devin Haygood. Haygood shot missed, but we have a foul. Amir Bennett, that'll give him three now with 18.52 left in the game. Yeah, it looked and like Jackson took a really awkward Ronald Jackson there. The Aggies took a really awkward fall. I was kind of surprised to see him get up there. See, he's kind of retiring his shoes here. Hey, good at the foul line, 40% on the season, 16 of 40. Uh, well, it'll go up a little bit because he makes that shot. I'll tell you, everybody you've said that had 40% and 50% percentages today have made the free throws, Gary. Are you telling me to stop it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting abuse from all corners here on this. Second shot misses. It'll be 51 46. All right, I'm properly chastised. <laughs> Wiley sends it down court. I guess playing half court man to man defense here. Omari Pete Green working, sends it out to Crosby. He works out toward the center of the court. Now makes a move to the right side. Dribbles left handed, goes over to the left side. Top of the key, drives right side of the lane, puts it up. The shot is blocked. The Hornets looking for goaltending. Yes, they did call. The officials did call goaltending. So the basket is good. And Crosby will be going to the line for one more. Chance to pull the team here within a point. John Crosby at the line. I'm not going to tell you what percentage shooter he is. Just guess on your own now, Coach Hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, 
<laughs> you just know it's a pretty good percentage. Uh, yeah, I was about to get to that. If you just, if the viewers are, if our listeners have been following us, then you know John Cross is a pretty good shooter. He got it. 17 points now in the game. Much closer to his average than he was on Saturday when he only had 15. The average is 20 points a game. There's a feed and a dunk by Devin Haygood. Yeah, that's a bit too easy there. Horn is giving up penetration in the middle of the lane for a dump ball for a dunk. Can't allow with that. 53-49. Crosby takes the ball left side. Rotates around the offense. Gets people moving. Wiley on the right side now. Sends it back over into the middle to Bennett. Bennett gives it to Crosby. Crosby trying to penetrate from the left side. Posts up. Takes the jumper. And he gets fouled. Shot didn't go, but John Crosby fouled in the act of shooting will put him back at the line. Crosby beginning to feel pretty good here. He's shaking and baking a little bit, trying to make some things happen. And um, if he gets going, look out, ladies and gentlemen. Clay Parker now has three fouls for North Carolina A&T. And the Hornets will be happy if they can go the entire second half, just every once in a while sending John Crosby to the foul line. Missed that first shot. Again, Gary. No, wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> not that I want to be sound defensive, but that was not my fault. <laughs> we're going to take. We're going to put all the misses on you tonight. He got that second one. Come on now. I can't make that shot either. So, <laughs> 53 to 50. Just under 18 minutes to go in the game. Good spin move inside. They're going to call a foul. I thought they could have called a traveling there on Cameron Langley, but instead. Yeah, the Hornets got to figure out how to solve this, uh, um, how to solve this um, situation defensively. They're allowing deep penetration into the lane. Crosby ended up drawing, getting called for a personal foul there. Yeah, that's two now. He didn't have any in the first half. He's placing Langley on the line. And may, wait, let me let me see what what, what he's been shooting. 59% from the line. Nine, he makes the first. Okay. Two, uh, his first trip to the line here today. It's another one of these questionable free throw shooters that are making free throws tonight. Offensive Missed. rebound, stick back. Yeah. By Haygood. Devin Haygood, big guy out there. Haygood at 6'8", 180, making a difference inside. Hornets unable to score on their end, down 56-50. Langley in the foul circle, passing inside. Baseline move, and they're going to say he stepped on a three-second violation. Thought maybe uh, Tyler May stepped on the line as he was going along the baseline, but somebody decided they were going to rent space in the lane, so the three-second violation called. Turn over to Delaware State. See if they can pick up some points here. Yeah, Aggies are back to this 1-3-1. One, one, half court. Extended. Putting a lot of pressure on. Crosby working with Wiley. They'll double up on Wiley, but that leaves uh, Ron Lucas open for the pass. Lucas sends it over to Pete Green on the right side. Tries to pass it inside. Loose ball. They'll call jump ball, and possession should be Delaware State. Hornets ball with nine seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, be Hornets ball out of bounds underneath here. Um, looking to try to cut into this, this six-point deficit here. Good hustle by Ronald Lucas to go to the floor and work for that ball. Gets rewarded for it that the Hornets get it. Aggies look like they're going to be appear to be playing man-to-man uh, -man, uh, half-court defense. Now Wiley sends it in. The ball batted away. Tried to get it to Lucas, knocked uh, out of bounds. Shot clock getting away from us, but I believe there was seven seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, it couldn't have taken bounds. five seconds in all that action because the ball just came in, was hit by somebody, and knocked out of bounds. So they'll go back there and go to the scorer's table to the timekeepers, figure out what the time should be. There'll be a shot clock correction now. I think they're going to put seven on the shot clock. Well, we're waiting. 16.56 left in the game. You are right on the mark, sir. Seven seconds left on the shot clock for Delaware State as Wiley will inbound it again to Crosby. Crosby backs up, top of the key, rolls left side, wants three. Nothing. 
but net. Hey, that's what I said before. He's beginning to feel it, shaking the bacon a little bit here. Hornets down by three, 56, 53. And a takeaway by Delaware State, and then a steal on a bad pass. Ronald Jackson gets the loose ball, gives it off to Haygood. Haygood tries to go underneath with a layup. He missed it. Hornets couldn't control it, though. Went out of bounds. Aggies will keep the ball. Coach Skeeter's making some substitutions here, bringing Janetto and Miles Collar in. Inbounded. And a three-pointer by Devin Haygood. I'll tell you, um, Ante has some really um, unique um, situation here. You got two five men that both can shoot the three, have a really nice touch. Yeah, they have some, they have some, some scorers on this team. 59-53, Crosby sends it over all alone. Looking for three on the shot was Amir Bennett. He missed. Long pass down court and the dunk by Ronald Jackson. Yeah, it's a transition bucket here. You never want to give those up. Didn't get a chance to play defense on it. Got a defensive rebound, and the Aggies advance to the head immediately. They get up by eight now, 61-53. Loose ball will go out of bounds right in front of us here, and a turnover by Delaware State. Crosby and uh, Amir Bennett kind of got crossed up there. Yeah, they just kind of had a disconnect there, but more importantly, long threes will always create long rebounds, so that's why... They got to get back in transition defense, so they're going to be giving up baskets. Timeout on the court, 1540 left in the game. It's North Carolina A&T 61, Delaware State 53. Hornets basketball continues in a moment here on HSRN, the voice of HBCU sports. here, American Spirit Federal Credit Union. It's another quick layup by Langley, just getting into the lane at will. They have to figure out how to solve that defensively. Aggies go up by 10, 63-53 with 15-15 left in the game. Fadeaway jumper by Crosby is good. I'll tell you, that fadeaway is unstoppable. 63-55, move inside, and we'll have a foul as Ronald Jackson goes for the layup. I tell you, every shot is in the paint here. The last, you know, the last three or four shots they've had have been in the paint, whether it's been one of the guards driving it to the paint, dumping it off to someone for a high percentage shot or in transition in the paint. So, the, you know, the Hornets have got to figure out how to neutralize and play a better scheme of defense here. Trey Gross still trying to find his pace. When he came in earlier in the game, he got called for a foul pretty quickly. And after the break there, he got called for that foul to send Ronald Jackson to the line. They definitely could benefit from a little more size in the paint. That's for sure. Because right now, NT is pretty much going down the lane and without any fear of anyone blocking shots or anything and attacking the rim. And like, uh, the game still has one of these feels of like the game Saturday night because um, yeah. the Hornets got down by as much as 15 points 
and uh, they just kind of hung around. They began to kind of claw themselves back. Yeah. So I wouldn't count them out, but we have kind of got to a little stale portion of the game here where they've struggled. Ronald Jackson with nine points back to that 10 point lead, 65 55, with 15 minutes to go. Plenty of time. Wiley sends it to Janetto. Janetto gets it back to Wiley. He shoots, missed. Ronald Jackson there for the rebound, using that 6 8 frame to get up there over everybody else. Now they work inside. Ronald Jackson again goes up. He's fouled by Gennetto. Yeah, Gennetto, I want to say that's his third. It is his third. It stops the clock with 14.39. Well, Gennetto is looking over to the sideline at Coach Skeeter like, you know, what am I to do? Because, you know, these guards are driving the ball down into the middle of the lane at will, and I have no choice other than to rotate over and then I leave my man wide open, so I can't cover two. And they're having trouble with Jackson at 6'8". Well, they just have to figure out how to, how to bring some resolve to the, the dribble penetration. Right now, a and uh, uh, the Aggies are getting shots, very, very high percentage shots at this point in time in the game. You know, sitting on 11-point lead. Jackson's first shot was good. Missed the second one. Janetto grabbed the loose ball. And Wiley brings it down for Delaware State. Works to the right side. Back top of the key to Janetto. Fakes the handoff to Carter. <laughs> Carter then gets it. Works around the right side. Right side of the lane. Puts up a jumper. Misses. Hornets get it back. Inside. Trey Gross. That was a big-time Gross, rebound by Trey Gross there. Gross heard me say uh, fake the handoff and put him in football mode. Well, he, he got the rebound, and he was, def he was definitely being very aggressive in terms of trying to turn the corner and see if he can get to the basket. But however, he got fouled in the act. Gross has struggled a bit from the free throw line here. The last game he was at the line, when top score and had a chance to uh, put, the, put the team ahead. And I guess he probably took that personal because he makes the first tonight. He did. And it was the second foul on Tyrone Lyons. Gross will get the second shot here. Cut that lead to single digits here with this shot if he makes it. Rolled it around the rim. Didn't go. We're 66-56 game with the Aggies in the lead. Long cross-court pass down on the left corner. Back out to Lyons. Now they'll go to the right-hand side. Working it with Langley. Langley will dribble and back up near the center court line. Being guarded by Leroy Moore. Now they go back down to that right-hand corner again. Down to six seconds on the shot clock. Hornets take it away. Good move by Leroy Moore to steal that ball. Took it right out of his hands. Now Crosby. Being guarded by Fred Cleveland. Crosby goes left side. Carter looking. Janetto, Crosby into the lane, up, fouled. Basket did not, the ball did not fall in, but will send John Crosby to the line yeah, on Fred look, Cleveland's man. first foul. That was a good look. They were trying to get John Crosby on an ISO over on the, uh, over on the right block there, mid post, and um, posting up Cleveland, which is a much smaller player. So Crosby loved the matchup. He got fouled in the act, though. Crosby is second in the MEAC in average minutes per game. He doesn't get a lot of rest. Sixth in the conference in assists turnover ratio. They just do better with him on the floor. Even when he's not scoring, it's just something about him being on the floor. He's a leader. You know, and and uh, he, he leads them to two points there with both shots being made, 66-58. Corner showing some full court pressure here. 2 2 1. Settling back into a man to man, man to man defense half court. He plays with that confidence from having played in a larger conference before transferring to Delaware State. He yeah, just has the mentality of a scorer. Cleveland wants two. He misses. It comes out to Crosby. And Dayton Flyers are in the Atlantic 10. That's a little bit of a higher level than the MEAC. 
And Crosby comes in here knowing he has the ability to play here. You know, the bonus could play a big part of this game coming down the back stretch. You got Haggis with one more foul, and um, the Hornets will be in the one and one the remainder of the game. Quay Parker got called for his fourth there, sixth team foul in the half. And we know that John Crosby can make a difference. He made the big difference Saturday with the buzzer beater to defeat North Carolina Central. Hornets have the ball as it went out of bounds off of North Carolina A&T. They send it in to Carter. Carter goes underneath, and they're going to call traveling as Fahim Gennetto just forgot to dribble before he took a couple steps. Yeah, I think it, <laughs> the basket got pretty big that he was so wide open. Yeah. That he just took you know, a couple of steps. He couldn't believe he was that open. You know, he was going for a dunk. He had the lane. I don't know. I have to see it, Gary, to believe it. It don't look like he got much lift right now coming <laughs> off that knee injury. Well, he doesn't have to get up a hole high because uh, he's already up there. <laughs> Hornets, man to man. Uh, I look like they're playing a little 2 3, settled into a 2 3 zone here. Now it's Jackson with the ball for the Aggies. They'll send it right side and through the legs of Cleveland, who saved it from going out of bounds. Being guarded by Moore. Cleveland wants three. Too strong. Off the backboard to Carter for Delaware State. He'll drive down and lose the ball as he gets down to make a move to the basket. It'll be a turnover. Ginetto at 6'7". And then he extends the arms up. Doesn't have to have a great amount of leaping ability to, to dunk. You know, he's already there. <laughs> you got him in to get him off the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aggies bring it down. You know, Aggies are very scary. You know, they go through phases where they make shots and then they hit periods where they don't. When they don't, you can always climb back into the game. Langley had the ball, took a couple of steps, tried to pass it. They got away with it, too. Turnaround jumper missed by Devin Haygood. He actually had two steps before he passed the ball and got away with it. Now it's Crosby left side for Delaware State. And then they try to go inside to Trey Gross off his fingertips, out of bounds, and, and uh, the Aggies take the loose ball. Now Moore on the right side passes it off to his teammate, Langley. Back down to Moore on the right in front of his bench and hits for three. That was a big shot there, you know, because he had a chance to kind of Crack into that deficit more. Now he's back to 11 point deficit. That was Andre Jackson, by the way. Excuse me, I, I identified him as more. They wear the same number, zero. Hornets missing their shot. The loose ball off the, the rim went out of bounds, and they say Delaware State touched it last. Timeout on the court, 11 11 still to play. It's an 11 point lead for North Carolina AT. 69 to 58. Delaware State University basketball is on HSRN, the voice of HBCU sports. Now, the next closest player in scoring, Andre Jackson for North Carolina A&T with 12. And it's Fred Cleveland with the ball for the Aggies right now. Left side, 
trying to pass it inside. Nobody there, so sends it to Langley. They'll kick it out to Jackson. Andre Jackson won it three on that. It wouldn't go. Hornets got the ball. Crosby comes down. On Miles Carter up off the glass. Wouldn't go. Couldn't control his own rebound either. And it comes out to North Carolina A&T. Langley trying to go inside, trying to get around Carter, and Carter will be called for a foul. Langley does an outstanding job of drawing contact to create fouls. Yes. You know, he, he gets down into the lane and does a good job of putting his body into the defender, uh, kind of almost putting the, situ the officials in an awkward situation to see if they're going to call fouls. And to this point, he's done an <laughs> outstanding job of it. Well, we already talked about him in that assist turnover ratio. Leads the MEAC in that category. He's tied for fifth in the conference in steals. He's just so quick in there. Reflective, reflexive actions as he makes that first shot. Makes it a 12-point lead. It just puts a lot of pressure on you when you're trying to guard him. As you can imagine, he has started all the games this season for North Carolina A&T. Missed that second shot. Hornets looking for three there, missing. Aggies come away with it. 70-58 game, 10 minutes, 5 seconds left to play. And that's time to come back. Yeah, there's plenty of time. Yeah. 10 minutes is more than enough time, but you got to begin to come up with some stops, though. Langley tried to dribble forward. The ball looked like it hit off of his foot, but it must have touched the Delaware State player as it rolled out of bounds. I'm not certain about that one. But. Yeah, it, uh, it couldn't have hit off of a Delaware State player. It would have deflected the direction of the ball. How well. Cleveland sends it left side. Andre Jackson tries to work baseline now, kicks it over on the right side to Cleveland. Three-point shot misses. Andre Jackson grabs that rebound. Yeah, he got away with a little bit of a push there on that rebound. Cameron Langley now backs up with it, being guarded by Carter. Again, spins into the lane. Again, he puts a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, he spins, puts the shot up, doesn't get it to go, but draws a foul. Langley puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and then you're trying to guard him. It's hard just containing him, and when you bring that second defender in, then he dumps it off for someone else to score. So uh, the Hornets got to figure out how they're going to neutralize him, and more importantly, keep him out in the middle of the lane, because now he's headed back to the free throw line. And Miles Carter's going to have to go out here. He just picked up his fourth personal foul. Langley missing that shot. We're going to have Amari Pete Green come in for Carter here. Now in a... Um, when Omari Pete Green was in there before, things happened. Well, outside of um, John Crosby, and this has kind of been the picture going throughout the season so far, it's been hard to get a second and third score. You can really contribute on a consistent basis. Omari Pete Green had eight points the first half. He hasn't scored since then. Hasn't been in the game too much in the second half, though. Langley's second shot was good. Hornets bring it down. Langley tried to break up a pass, knocked it out of bounds. Hornets keep the ball with 9.22 still to play. Down by 13, 71, 58. They'll give it to Crosby on the inbound pass. He takes it right side to Pete Green, sends it back out toward the middle to Gennetto. Gennetto tried to pass it to Wiley and off the mark, stolen away by Cleveland. They get it inside to Ronald Jackson. He tried to lay up underneath and missed everything. Hornets got the loose ball, so that, they came out okay on that one. They turned it over, and the young man missed a shot, and they were able to get the, off, the off defensive rebound. Um, Aggies look like they're kind of trying to surge a bit with their defense here. And that's Amari Pete Green with the ball for Delaware State. Sends it over right side to Amir Bennett. Bennett shot off the rim. Goes yeah. into the hands of Ronald Jackson. Just have to believe they can get better shots for uh, uh, Amir Bennett. A&T working it around. Andre Jackson goes inside. Shot missed. Follow-up tipped in by Devin Haygood. And they're letting him play a bit here. A&T is now a &T is putting a little full-court pressure on. Hornets call a timeout here with 8-19 left to play. Down by 15, 73-58.
Delaware State University basketball continues in a moment on HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. Hornets have some work to do here in the last eight minutes and 19 seconds, down by 15 points. They'll start with the ball here as play resumes. It's Crosby in the backcourt with Amari Pete Green. They'll double up on him, sends it over to Crosby. They'll double up on him. He gets it across the center court line. Amari Pete Green into the lane, short jumper, missing, a loose ball, grabbed by Bennett. He misses. Amari Pete Green, though, is there for the follow-up. And off the bench, he has contributed 10 points today. 73-60. to 60. Aggies missing down at their end. Lead pass down to Crosby. Crosby through traffic. Kicks it out. A Ginetto wants three. Missing inside underneath. We're going to have a foul as Amir Bennett, a foul from behind, went down. He's okay. It looked like he went down hard, but he, he really kind of folded down and didn't hit flat. Like getting ready to take the media. Could be. And we will have a media timeout here with 7.43 left in the game. Eric Skeeter's working the officials, coming out almost to uh, the foul lane to talk to them. 73-60 lead for the Aggies here over the Hornets. And we'll be back with more Delaware State University basketball on HSR and the voice of HBCU Sports. For brakes, tune-ups, or realignments, trust the duck. Fred Drake Automotive, 302-378-4877. And Amir Bennett at the foul line, missing that shot off the front of the rim. Yeah, the Hornets have struggled scoring, too. They only had 14 points here this half. It'll be Langley with the ball, holding it near center court. Taps the top of his head to set up the play. Gets it over in the right corner to Cleveland. He brings it back out toward the middle of the court. Over to Andre Jackson, back to Cleveland, now down on the side to Langley. They'll work it around 
A three-pointer by Andre Jackson. Yeah, Hornets going 2-3 zone. That's pretty dangerous because the Aggies have a lot of shooters. Oh, they gave him two on that, so it's 75-60. to 60. I thought they were going to give him three. Hornets losing the ball down at the other end, and it'll be a and ball once more. Andre Jackson with 14 in the game. He leads the scoring. Hornets are going man-to-man -man now. Leads the scoring for the Aggies. Top of the key, jumper, and three for Tyrone Lyons. He has 10 points now, 78-60. And the Aggies trying to pull away here, an 18-point lead, a steal. Easy layup, almost didn't go in. Looked like it might roll off on Andre Jackson. Yeah, they got Amari Pete Green in a real tough situation. He's not a great ball handling. They got him trying to bring the ball to the floor, turns it over. 20-point lead, 80-60. to 60. <coughs> Crosby from way outside and drills it from way outside. 80 to 63, and the Hornets will call a timeout here. Try to get something together as they continue. If you're having a celebration or you just want some ice cream, Cold Stone Creamery, don't forget they are your place to go in Dover for that ice cream. Pete Green has 10 of that. Yeah, off the bench. Aggies ball. Andre Jackson sends it long cross court to Fred Cleveland. They work it around. They want to use the clock here now and, and uh, take up a lot of time. Keep Delaware State from having the ball. Langley inside, puts it up and in. And he's not really their scorer, but he'll contribute as he is up to uh, nine points. 82-63, Hornets missed the shot by Carter. He got his own rebound, turn around, puts it up. It bounces around and then drops through. Miles Carter with six on the game. 82-65, Hornets still within 17. Some time left here to try to get it back, and there's a nice steal as uh, they went up high and blocked a pass. Leroy Moore, and then the ball almost went out of bounds. Miles Carter saved it threw it back into Moore as they work it around. We have a foul. Ronald Jackson getting his fourth. Miles Carter, man, he has an energy level to second to none. You can always tell when he's when he's in, you know, placed in the game because he brings a great deal of energy and, and burst and explosiveness. Made a difference late in the game on Saturday against North Carolina Central, and especially at the foul line, they kept putting him there. Uh, for, a, for a couple of tries, and he was hitting the shot. So let's see what he does here. Well, I think Coach is at that point in the game where he's now beginning to make substitutions for offense offense and defense, seeing if he can get a crew here to begin to generate some stops defensively. Carter makes the first free throw and and and, and, and take every opportunity he can uh, to put a few more shooters in there when he can. But as long as he has John Crosby on the floor, he has offense. He, he does that. And Carter hits both. That cuts the deficit to 15, 82 to 67. 5, 15 left to go. 
Hornets trying to uh, get back into this game here. Long pass. Uh, Tyrone Lyons took it, but it was intended for Tyler May. He turned oh. around and gave it to May, who then got it to Cameron Langley. Langley into the lane, kicks it back outside. Jackson drops a three. The Tigers are basically playing off of Langley right now and are just allowing him to get into the lane and penetrate. If a second defender comes over, he's kicking it out to his shooters. North Carolina A&T hit the three there and called timeout with 4.56 left to play. All-natural gourmet chips, no MSG or gluten in these things because they are just flat-out good. Symphony Chips, order yours online today at symphonychips.com. to get moving probably around 14, 15. So they're basically trying to cut this five minutes you have remaining, 456 remaining. In every possession they get, they're taking the top half of the shot clock off, basically cutting the game in half as much as possible. Decreasing chances of a comeback. We're back into action here. Carter driving past the defense. Gets it off to Crosby. He'll take it out on the logo. Set things up. No time to panic here. To Amir Bennett, his jumper misses underneath as they go for the rebound. It's like Fahim Janetto will go to the line here as he got fouled. Yeah, I mean, I'm always amazed, you know, particularly a night like tonight where Amir Bennett has logged, you know, he's played, he's played, you know, a good 25 plus minutes and he hasn't touched that ball not one time on the block. You know, most of his shots have been mid range foul line jump shots or either, or either three point attempts. You like to see him get that ball on the block and, and then run some plays where he can get some really touches, some good touches, and a high percentage area where he can score it. Amir Bennett to the bench, Ronald Lucas into the game, and at the line it's Janetto who makes the first shot. Hornets fighting back here best they can. 432 still to play, and both shots made. 85-69 as Bennett drops them both in from the line. Again, Coach Skeeter's subbing, you know, making substitutions for, for defense. Seeing if he can generate some stops here, possibly get a steal or two. Has more. Gross. Crosby, of course, into the game. Andre Jackson just Jackson dropped another filling. three. He's filling it now. That's his second consecutive three-pointer here. 88-69 when the Hornets cut it a little bit. He hits a three. Hornets looking for three. Bounces around the rim. Won't fall. But we have a foul on the rebound attempt. Yeah, Miles Carter, he brings got, a lot to the table, but he's not they really got, a good three-point shooter. Yeah, they got Ronald Lucas, though, on the foul, giving him three, stopping the clock. 414 left. That's eight team fouls. So we're going to see Ronald Jackson at the foul line again. Ronald Jackson from the line, five of six for the game. Well, you know, uh, the other thing I'm noticing here is that um, when he took John Stansberry out early in the game, he has yet to return. So his knee must be bothering him. You're right. This is Ronald Jackson. He converts on the first free throw. I hadn't even really noticed that, but yeah. uh, Stansberry started and hasn't been in for much yeah, after yeah. that. He hasn't, been, he hasn't been back in at all. Yeah. And he's a young man who definitely um, has played well this year for the Hornets. Stansberry with only two minutes and 47 seconds of game action here today. Both shots made by Jackson, Ronald Jackson, makes it 90 to six, 89 to 69. And the Hornets lose it down at the other end. Four minutes to go. North Carolina a and a little bit of defense, hung him up there for a moment, but all by himself down in the corner. Jackson, jumper, missing. Ronald Jackson couldn't get that three-pointer to go. We're going to see a shot by Fahim Janetto that'll hit off the front of the rim as he tried for three. Came up just a little bit short. Cameron Langley will bring it down slowly, being guarded by Miles Carter. 
Over to Andre Jackson, back to Langley. 3.20 left to play. Langley inside, missing wow. the alley-oop to Ronald Jackson, and he puts it down with authority. He grabbed that lob out of the rafters, man. I, didn't, I thought he threw it out of bounds. 91-69 according to the scoreboard. Three minutes to go. Crosby feeds it off to Bennett. Left side looking for three on the shot by Carter. It missed. Loose ball. Again, that's one of the things that Miles Carter was really not great at is shooting the three-point shot. So it kind of got him out there trying to do some things that he's not that dynamic at. And a timeout with 2.52 still to go. It's North Carolina A&T 91, Delaware State 69. Keep with us here for Hornets basketball on HSRN, the voice of HBCU sports. points the second half. Get down to the last two minutes, 52 seconds here and Memorial Hall, Gary Lang, Coach John Hill, North Carolina A&T. They go for another alley-oop and they got it perfectly played from Fred Cleveland to Devin Haygood. Cleveland with a nice assist there to make it 93 to 69. Yeah, they threw it right over the top of the Hornets press there. And lob for two, quick two. Miles Carter driving into the lane, gets the nice finger roll layup to go in, 93-71. Carter with 10 points on the day. Ball knocked out of bounds, touched last by John Crosby. It'll be Aggie's ball when we return to action here. With 2.22 left, Crosby's going to get a, a chance to a sit down here. Getting a little action tonight. Jordan Bushrod, yeah, he, he hasn't had an awful lot of playing this time, year, time this year. And I think it's a, a good move by the coach to give John Crosby a, a breather here. Jordan Bushrod, this is only his third game appearance of the season. And in this situation, give him some time. Yeah, every healthy body to this point has had an opportunity to play. Ronald Jackson sends it down. Now it's Langley driving baseline, trying to get some help there. They tied him up. He's looking for help, and he passes it out. Almost stolen by Leroy Moore, but taken right away from him by Cleveland. Cleveland goes past Moore, steps inside the arc, takes the jumper off the glass, and it's good. I look to be a little luck there off the glass. Hey, <laughs> baby. He baked it. I thought it was going to be off the mark, and all of a sudden that thing dropped in. <laughs> Moore gives to uh, Bushrod, and now we have a foul. Stopping the clock with a minute and 33 still to go. I'll tell you, Cleveland of the Aggies um, is a very nice-looking freshman. This young man is a freshman, and he's played really solid for them this year. Um, you know, tonight, you know, he actually has – um, he has 11 points tonight, 11 points and two assists and four steals. That's, that's a nice contribution from a freshman. Ronald Lucas at the line, dare I say, a 73% foul shooter as he drops the first one in. I concur. As I, as I risk being called a jinx in so many words. I concur. <laughs> Lucas, 6'6", 190 pounder. It's a business information systems major. And he drops both shots in for five on the game, 95-73. Minute 30 remaining. Yeah, Hornets would like to 
to make that score a little more respectable. But uh, both the women and the men running into the buzzsaw from North Carolina. Going around traffic, it's Andre Jackson. He'll send it on out to Fred Cleveland. They want to use up as much of the clock as they can, down to eight seconds on the shot clock when Andre Jackson. Andre Jackson has come awake. Another three there, 98-73. There's that Cleveland with a steal and a travel. But the whistle blows. Yeah, the whistle blows before the shot goes off. That would have put him over 100 points because he shot it from three-point range and made it. But after the whistle and the traveling call, he gets a steal and he travels, built, you know, jumping into a three-point shot. <laughs> One minute to go. 25-point lead for North Carolina A&T. Hornets trying to pick up some more points here. And a whistle before the shot can be made. Fred Cleveland Jr., that's three personals on him. Let's send Leroy Moore to the line and see what he's able to do here. 22% foul shooter. You know, it's always interesting. All coaches do it a little differently, but uh, Leroy Moore misses the first free throw. But, I'm sorry. You know, you're, you're looking at young people now <laughs> that coaches, Coach Skeeter is playing, and they just kind of look a little, they look a little green, like they're, look, they're not really comfortable. You wonder if they should have played him a little more in the first half of the season. Missed both. Fred Cleveland gets the rebound, sends it right side. Andre Jackson wants three more. Couldn't get it to go. Fast break. Carter on the dunk for Delaware State. He has 12 on the game, 98-75. 35 seconds left. About a nine-second difference between game clock and shot clock. That ball knocked out of the hands of Webster Fillmore. First time we've said that name today as uh, it's the first time he's been in the game. But it was touched last by the Hornets as they knocked it out of bounds. 30 seconds left. Aggies inbound. And lost. Off the hands of the Aggies and into the hands of Miles Carter. He goes for the layup and gets fouled. And they're going to, nope, he didn't get fouled. They called goaltending on that. That one was up at the glass when they knocked it away. So it's goaltending, too, for Delaware State. 98-77. That's the second goaltending call of the day on the Aggies. And there's a block from behind on the shot underneath by Ron Lucas. Leroy Moore wants two, three. It won't go. Battle for the ball underneath. And we have nine seconds left. And... Yeah. He got a foul here on the Hornets. Yep. Kind of don't want to blow the whistle because they know it's pretty much over, but you absolutely have to. So they didn't indicate a control. foul, though. They didn't indicate who had the foul. As we'll wind it down, North Carolina A&T had a chance with a three-point shot earlier to take it over the century mark, but they were unable to. But they'll win it here by 21, 98-77 over Delaware State. Not a good day for either the women or the men as the women lost by 24 and the men will lose here by 21 after two big wins on Saturday against North Carolina Central. Well, and sometimes you get the bear and sometimes the bear gets you. Just got to keep working, keep working, keep working. Coach Skeeter's coming over to be with us here for just a moment and we'll let him get his headset on. Well, I got you this little present for you. Hey, man. <laughs> Tuck it down in your shirt, man, so nobody don't see it. Hey. 